new Pro X piston going in the TX300 that we have going on. This is a really cool build. Check it out right now. TX300, 300 XC, 10,500, uh, 2,000, 10,253 feet. I don't want to lie and round up. Okay, let's go. We've already cleaned everything really well from our old gaskets. We have our new uh, Kemetic makes a gasket that's the right thickness. We have this on here. We have our V-Force reed cage we've already got installed. We have this cleaned off, this little seal over here. We'll talk about how we're going to, uh, you know, clean that up for and seal it when we put our cylinder on with our power valve arm. Everything's ready to go. We have our piston. We're going to get this first circ clip in right now. Okay, first thing we're going to do is put the circ clip in. I like to put the first circ clip in on the on the bench here. And I use these old dikes like this and just kind of get it torn in. They, they are a little bit, they're not as tough as the stock clips, but still a little bit challenging. Like you could feel it get into its groove right there and I just felt it click. Now I like to try to turn it in the groove to make sure that it's fully seated. Nothing will ruin a top end job more than losing a circ clip. So we're just gonna move it right there and you can see it just, and see how that you only see about 40% or so of the clip. 40 or 50% of you see sticking above, that's all you wanna see. So what I've done is I've dropped the, the ring in here into the cylinder and you, that's called the ring end gap right there in this, this gap between those. Nowadays, you hardly ever have to mess with it, but if you wanna check it, that's how you'll do it. And you put a feeler gauge through there and see that you have the proper gap. It'll tell you in the instructions, but it's like 14 uh, thousandths. And, and to, to make it larger, you simply go like this and just touch it with like a stone like this. You don't want it, you know, a file could be too grabby, but just like a stone like that, and it'll make it a little bit larger. But you can look through and see that you have a good gap. Most of the bikes nowadays, you'll never have to worry about it. I like to put a little bit of assembly lube in the ring grooves so that there has has some lube behind the rings so that on startup it's well lubricated on the rings if there's a letter like in here it's an n this is the side that's going to go up it's usually not that critical but if you just use that as a rule of thumb the writing goes up then you're fine so to do the bottom ring first of course and you just get that and just walk it on and you have it stop at the ring pin. Those ring pins are what keeps the ring from turning. Top one's just a tiny bit easier. You don't have to walk over the other one. But just like that. Now that's how far apart the ring pins are from each other. We have a new top end bearing. Uh, Weisco has this. Weisco and Pro-X are sister companies owned by the same company. So we get a lot of the similar parts. Now I'm going to do this, gets a little bit of lube on the uh, wrist pin as well. Okay, so we're putting our wrist pin in on the side without the clip, of course. And so we got an arrow, they always have an arrow that's pointing towards the exhaust side, or it's going to drop the piston on. And I can push the wrist pin in all the way. And if you want to make sure it's seated, you could grab like a, you know, something like this, a tool like a, like this little 10 millimeter here and push it to where it feels like it's fully seated. And I can look at putting our clip in here. You can see I kind of dropped a rag over here so that if I lose my clip, it doesn't go down into the crank and I have to try to fish it out. This clip's uh, typically a little easier to get in because the, the wrist pin is helping you. So we just walk it that little bit. Oh, I just clicked in. That's nice. What we don't have on camera is the one where it's shot across the room. Everybody's done that at least once. So again, I'm going to make sure that that clip moves just a hair. There it goes. And I'm going to push it back the other way. So it's turning in the groove. That's really nice. So it's locked into place. Arrows pointing to the exhaust. We're ready to go. Our cylinder we got it ported from uh, TMR. This isn't something you have to do, and we've never done one on our CARB uh, 300s, but I thought it'd be kind of cool since this is our last, I say this jokingly, but 
This is our last 300 build ever carbureted. 2017 and 19 was the really good years of these KTM 300s. And we re really like the carb bike, the way, it, the way it rides and the feel of it. I can see his porting right here. And we were able to he cut the head as well to add compression and a little bit different dome shape. And so I just did a little bit of cleaning there. I wanted to make sure that there was no... Now I'm going to add a little bit of lube to the cylinder in a couple spots and then rub it around. I'm just going to coat the, the walls there. Before I drop the cylinder down, I'm going to put a little bit of this you know, silicone or gasket sealer around this area. And I can wipe off the excess when it dries, so it's not too critical here. But if it looks a little ugly, so I'm gonna wipe it around here. Then I'm gonna put this piece back on here, like that. Down into here. These things, when they leak, you just get a lot of oil residue. And this bike had some. Uh, also, if you're washing your bike regularly, it's hardly a problem. Uh, we wash our bike after every trail trip or ride, you know. Okay, so we're going to drop the piston on. This is a, you know, of course, most of the time we do this job, we are in the bike. Because most people aren't pulling the engine out. But since we had the engine out, since we were going to do the, uh, you know, since we painted our frame and everything at the same time, we'll drop it down. and Look, look how pretty that looks. Look at that. Okay, so I'm going to like to leave it up here, give some support while we work on the rest of it here. Now, we're not addressing the power valve situation on this bike. When the cylinder came back from uh, TMR, Tom already had the power valve reassembled for us, so we don't really have to worry about it. I will tell you, most of the bikes we do these on these 300s, we don't mess with the power valve if it's clean. If everything's running good, it shouldn't need, a, need attention. So... Don't overly stress cleaning the power valves. If you're not running a really dirty oil, and, and when you pull it apart, if, if you move this and everything's moving fine, don't stress it. Spray some contact cleaner in there and call it good. Okay, I got the last nut dialed down. So I'm just getting these all just finger tight right now. Okay, now I'm just, just snugging them all. Uh, this wood block, we've done some videos talking about having like a wood block like this. We have a few of them around. You can show the real old one up there that makes a mess when I have it down because it's chipped out more. I had to grab a wrench that had more teeth. Like a 12 point here. Okay, so now I can get it... Now I can start tightening it fully. Okay. What's that torque spec right there? Okay. Whoop. Almost lost our clutch rod there. It's a little tougher when it's not in the bike as far as, and I'm up high. Okay, so now we're gonna set our power valve. And both of our, you can see when I move the power valve arm here, it'll move this side as well. So we're putting our gasket on, and you wanna make sure you put this gasket on before you put this arm and clip on, because we might edit that part out of the video where I did that the first time. So this is the one that is a bit of a leaker. We're gonna coat right now both sides of this bottom part so that when it slides in here like this, it's kind of protected. But it, there we go. So we're lined up. These, we can put a tiny bit here to hold it, but it's not really doing as much as down there on the, on the bottom. Okay, so this clip thing, I was just talking about how, I was forgetting how it, how it worked, but it comes up like this. It comes in from the bottom, and you can see it poke through. And then you just pull it over, you can push it down with your fingers, and now it's full. You can even pry on here. It's kind of stuck like that. If, if this little clippy gets bent up, if it gets messed up, you want to get a new one. Just cleaning off this surface right here. 
want to make sure that this is good and clean. Some silicone all through here like this. And you can be a little bit heavy on it, but not crazy. Because and when it dries, I, I like to go peel it off so it doesn't look terrible. We're going to slide it on just like that. Looks really good. On the older bikes, these, these, these things even leaked worse. Not so bad on these. And you don't got to go crazy tightening these, but we want to get them good and snug. Something like this. You know, I wouldn't probably put a ratchet on there and risk over tightening them. I've been wiping it down. I put a tiny bit of contact cleaner on my paper towel and I can kind of go around and clean up any ugliness from my the silicone. I know some guys don't care, but I, we want it to look nice. So our, our other cover with the gasket is sufficient with no sealer usually. It's just fine on this side. Power valve stuff. So just good and snug. This is like a plastic, almost really thin material. And you just, just snug these up and we're good. I put a tiny bit of grease on the O-ring. I had to stretch it out a tiny bit. It fits in there nicely right there. A little bit of grease on my fingers. Uh, be careful not to stretch out the O-ring I'm just laying grease on there so that it kind of stays in the groove. Just a little bit. Guys worry about, they want to use silicone or something like that, but you really don't need to. Our Comedic kit comes with new washers for the head bolts. We'll just drop those on there just like that. So we have our head ready to go on. It has these little dowels in there that are really nice for locating. And you just, just push it down and you could tap it with a little Soft tapper just to have it seat all the way down. We're going to drop all of our bolts on just like that. And just, you, know, you can just kind of spin them down quick and dirty. And now we're just dropping them down. Then we're going to just start to snug them before I get my torque wrench out. I still like to use my uh, old school torque wrench. I don't like uh, the new uh, digital one. I, ha I have digital ones. Spencer likes to use those. I, I, and I'm just roughing it out right now, going up to it, sneaking up to it, as I say. 22, I hadn't even got this one. Okay, so now we're going to bounce around here. And, and any type of cross motion is fine. People will really lose their mind if you don't use their exact right one, but not the end of the world. Okay, so now we've got all of them. And now I'm, that was at 22. I'm going to bring it up to 25. And we don't torque a lot of stuff, but these are one of the few ones we do torque. There we go. Okay, that's it, but just for good measure, I'm gonna bounce around the whole head one more time, just to be sure. I think that's it. I cleaned up the stock little rubber boot here that sits on the spark plug. Old one was looking pretty old. We'll put a brand new one in here, of course. Good time to do it right now when you do the top end. If everything's running good, we hardly ever have to change these on these carbureted bikes. On the other bikes, the TPI and TBI, we have had issues where we have had to. Not so much on this one. Okay, Pro X piston change. Pretty simple. A lot easier, you know, right here as far as working around it. But in the bike, uh, you know, you don't have to take it out of the bike to work on the bench. It's, it's not critical. Uh, it's kind of nice that we have a real clean engine to work on. This is a 2019. The bike only had uh, 60 hours on it. So we're going to get this back in our chassis. You'll be able to check out our other videos on this TX300 build, which is going to be really cool. This is a bike we're going to have for a long time is the plan. The last of the Mohicans, the Unicorn TX300, last of the carbureted bikes. Really cool bike. We'll have more videos coming. Like, comment, subscribe.